Hello again. It's been a while. Hi. Still on the West Coast, although I'm not sure anymore where I was the last time. But here we are in Los Angeles in the evening after a beautiful evening with our special guest, Nasri, mm -hmm. whom you will recognize. He's a little bit jet lagged. This is not the wine here. This is a jet lag because it's a long way to Paris. And uh, we just had this amazing evening together with the rest of the family for Mother's Day. And we had these two beautiful bottles of wine that we want to share with you, at least the last uh, drops that are left in the bottle. Uh, and so it is white, a Chardonnay by Peter Michael, Belle Cote, 2013. And the red, this is a realm which, who's, as you know, my, probably my favorite producer in Napa. And it's a Beckstoffer Tokelon 2006. So it's funny uh, because 2006, uh, Nasri and I, with a couple of our friends, were in Napa in 2007. This is when we first spent time with the team at Tokelon. And we tasted from Barrel, the Tokelon, the, sorry, the team from Realm. And I think it was probably 2006 because it was in April 2007. And the barrels were, you know, the, the 2006 crop. So it's kind of interesting to go back and taste that in a bottle almost 20 years later. So here we are, and we're going to talk about these two wines um, separately. So let me start with the white, uh, the, the Chardonnay by uh, Peter Michael. And uh, it's, uh, it's Belle Cote. He, as you know, I don't know, I'm sorry to say that, maybe you don't, but... Peter Michael is this English. We did some red wine of his before. English uh, dude who sort of came to Napa after being successful in the tech industry in the early 80s and started his winery called Peter Michael in, this, in Knights Valley, which is at the upper end of Sonoma. And over time, they acquired more land in Napa and they did more Cabernet from Napa and, and, and blends from Knights Valley. We had the... the Les Pavots together, he has Au Paradis, which is probably the most famous Cabernet he makes. That's from Napa. And he's got an amazing series of Chardonnays and Pinots in the Knights Valley. High elevation wines and uh, very special <clears throat> sort of vineyards that uh, he's developed over time. That each, uh, each name, like Belle Cote, means nice sort of slope. And it uh, gives him, uh, you know, it, it just basically has these, these sort of wink, uh, 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 if you want, winks to the French uh, uh, heritage, especially when it comes to uh, white, uh, uh, white wine, Chardonnay and Pinot. And this is a nicely uh, sort of ex exposure on this parcel. It's, great. it's his first ch uh, Chardonnay parcel. They, they're covered on the west uh, by a row of trees that sort of prevents the, the worst damage from the afternoon uh, sun. And so uh, they kind of have this really special exposure that really produces uh, ideal growing and harvesting, you know, conditions for, for the Chardonnay. And so this is just the background. Let's just talk about the wine. I'm going to let Nasri maybe make a few comments here. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Rassan. Uh, just to give some some context, I'm I'm not really uh, an expert. Uh, I'm far from this uh, of uh, American wines. However, we've been um, uh, I've been visiting uh, um, a few times, and each time we, we try when, when I went to Napa, we went uh, to 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 taste wines, and this time uh, we decided I'm spending a few days in uh, in California, and we decided that we will concentrate a few days on American wines. And um, for me, it's very interesting because they, these are great wines, obviously. And it's always interesting for me to compare, to have the difference, the different approach, the different cultural approach, I would say, not only technical, between uh, how a European, I mean, like wine lover would, would taste the wine and how he would compare it with maybe the same grapes, maybe uh, uh, the same uh, cepage, but probably in, in a different way, different way, different terroirs and different way of uh, appreciating and liking the wines. And um, 
So now we are, we had the wonderful uh, Chardonnay and um, later a Cabernet Sauvignon. And it's very interesting to, to compare the Chardonnay that uh, is very uh, close to what, to a morceau, I would say, um, that you would find in Burgundy with some slight differences, but it's striking. First nose and the first uh, taste, uh, how close it is. Uh, and then uh, later on, the differences appear uh, when you taste it and when you spend some uh, We're going to get back to that because I'm yeah. going to hold him to this so he can tell us those differences. But, but the truth is, when you first take a whiff, when you first open it, the first thing, though, what's interesting is very oxidative, just the first, like, 10 seconds, and then it kind of blows right off. And then after that, you've got this fullness, this richness, the butteriness uh, of a, of, that basically makes you think right away, Meursault, and nice, very nice length. And, and then we're going to look here at the color. It's really not very clear. I'm not sure if this is, you know, filtered or not, but it's kind of a rich golden color. This is 2013, so it's really nicely evolved. And on the nose, it's got these sort of the butter, really, I feel about a little bit of, not, not very citrusy, a little bit more uh, maybe ripe pear, uh, riper fruits, riper white fruits, not necessarily too acidic, I think. I yes, agree. absolutely, yeah, I agree. Coming back to the, to the oxidation, I mean, uh, you you really feel it, but it's not. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not um, disagreeable. It's not. It's uh, not unpleasant. It's not unpleasant at all. It gives it some. Uh, well, it gives uh, it also some acidity on the front end, yeah. but the acidity doesn't really last. So it starts acidic on the front end. Then at the end, you've got this sort of nice cushy. It's got this cushiness, that softness to it that stays in the on the length really of the wine. Uh, and I don't know how it compared to a Meursault. Maybe you were saying at dinner, it just doesn't have as much acidity, maybe as you would like, or well, on the nose, it's. I would say it's pretty close. It's pretty close. It, it, it's. It, I can still uh, feel some sweetness uh, in some way that it, it's a little bit uh, more uh, present than in a Meursault. Well, in a, you know, in usual, usually in a Meursault, there is some richness. It's very it is fat. To the, it is fat. It, it is, is fat. It's due to the sun or the, you know. It's the, the wood. Yeah, it's but the but wood. although it should also be resolved by now. It's, it's really one of these Chardonnays that's uh, more Burgundian maybe because the wood is not as present as some other Chardonnay in California. It could be because of the age. It could be because of the style. But it's really, it's just really very, very tasty and uh, a pleasure to drink even on its own. Now, you know, also over dinner, I think we had it with some Brussels sprouts, which was probably a mistake because it kind of made it taste more bitter. Yes. The Brussels sprouts were caramelized and too sweet. This is probably a wine you would want to have with some nice cheese, maybe some hard cheese. It would sort of blend in nicely. Uh, I would even say cheese would be even better than, than fish almost because yes, of the, yeah. the fatness and the roundness of it. But in any case, it's just a really... Nice Chardonnay, and I just wanted Nasri to be able to compare it to what he knows because he's a big fan of uh, of Burgundy, Burgundy whites, and and uh, so this is for the Peter Michael. We're gonna move on to the red. Now, Realm, as you know, again I'm saying this again. This is one of really our favorite producers. We were just there last week, and we're gonna have a separate video on that. Uh, and Tokanon is to me, uh, sort of the wine that I like the most in a way, uh, uh, even though there's a lot of different wines uh, that they make. And, and this goes back because that was the first wine we tasted. And I've, I think I've shared some of these pictures with the, with the people on the channel here, with, out of the, with, the, with the test tube out of the barrel in 2007. <clears throat> and Tokanon is from Beckstoffer, the Beckstoffer vineyard, so Andy Beckstoffer's land. They buy fruit from the Tokanon just a little bit of that token on piece. Primarily Cabernet Sauvignon, I think there's a couple of percents of Petit Verdot uh, uh, on and off. But this is sort of, from a vineyard point of view, it is the 
summum of Napa Valley, Valley, Napa Valley vineyards. We're not talking about the mountains. You see the valley, the drained sediment, you know, Val, Napa Valley, the, the vineyard, if you drive there, it's right there. You drive sort of right by it. And, and these guys have made, have always succeeded in making incredible wine from the Tokenon. Back then, in the beginning, was Mike Kirby, the winemaker who also, who's obviously the proprietor and winemaker at Relic. And now the, the winemaker is Benoit Touquet, that he's been uh, there for, for 15 years maybe, or, or, or a little less than that. And so different winemaker, but we want to also th think about whether we see some similarities in the wines that we've had recently and in, in, in this one. So here we are, uh, the color, again, uh, even though it's a 2006, the color is still incredibly deep. There's no orange here at all, oh, not even yeah. around the border. And and uh, maybe the red uh, tablecloth, that doesn't really help. But it's still very <clears throat> rich, very deep. When we first opened it, it had that sort of dusty Bordeaux-like, because maybe because in Bordeaux, you're more used to having really old bottles of wine. So it really had this sort of Bordeaux dustiness that kind of uh, disappeared right away. All the sediment was basically stuck to the cork because the bottle has been lying down for so long. So when we took the cork out, most of the sediment came out with it. You're not going to find any here, even though it's in the, we are here at the bottom of, of the bottle. The nose is just very alcoholic. It's 15% alcohol. So it's that camphor really sort of jump at you, which I find really delightful because it's not quite pure alcohol in a way. It's got this sort of flavor to it and it's it's just so pervasive. It really fills your sinuses and, and your and your nose. But then beyond that, it's got the blue and red fruit of a Cabernet and it's just sort of the thing you feel like you want to jump right into. I don't know if you have anything to add on the nose. Uh, no, it's exactly this, like the the camphor, the alcohol, and the and the and the you know black and red fruit, absolutely. And you, when you taste it, it's very, it's very strong, very lots of. Um, um, Mature, lots it's of, very lots of body. Lots it's of very body. strong. Yes, but it's also it's got that attribute that, Silky, that like, I love yeah. at the round. You know, that's got that reticence and the discretion and the control on top of the power. So it's never really, it never goes nuts like some of these cabernets. Really expensive cabernets can go like wow, you know, fruit bomb, whatever. You would not use that expression. So it's powerful. It's controlled. And to talk about the tannins, because you use the word silky, the tannins are very, very smooth. And it's beyond, it's more than silky. I would almost say it's velvety. And what I mean by that, it, it's got a little bit of that catchiness, but it's very, very smooth. It's like almost like you're touching a cat's tongue. So it's not super smooth. It's very, very nice, smooth. But it's got, of course, it's got a little bit of that ruggedness just a little bit that is so fine and and that kind of really catches your tongue and and you just kind of say wow this is really almost frictionless and i think i think you want a little bit of friction because this is what tannins are about but it's just perfectly measured in terms of being there without really being there there is a also some uh, bitterness like yes very slight bitterness but that's uh, yeah. sort of the dark chocolate like yes. you know, to me that's what i what yeah. i find you know at the end i think it's a token on or maybe a backstopper we've had that in the token on we had together a few years back was 2012 we made a video on that in france it's got that sort of uh, semi-sweet bitterness on the end that kind of along with the tannins sort of sort of closes the loop on the wine at the end of the finish and then like you feel okay you've done the beginning the middle and the end and now you're ready 
for another sip. At least that's the way, you know, I think about it. It's it just it, it incredible that these wines, even though different winemakers and of course different age, I still feel, or maybe it's my imagination, that I detect some similarity, some of that sort of quality, the, the power and the, and the finesse and that dark chocolate, you know, finish uh, that, you know, that are, that are sort of reminder of each other across, across uh, you know, the ages. Absolutely. Now, uh, getting back to the French wines, as much as you could uh, confuse the Peter Michael with a Meursault, with a Meursault this one, I mean, uh, doesn't come near anything. No, you're uh, right. Any, any French wine. It's, well, uh, well, it's more fruit. Certainly not a Bordeaux. Or, well, the well, only thing close the, would be Bordeaux. Yeah. Because of the Cabernet. Yeah, but it's, you know. It's, it's got it's, more fruit, I it's think. Mo yes. Yeah, more alcohol. Absolutely, much more alcohol. And, and uh, the tannins are finer in a way, I think, almost. Yeah, Maybe. I mean, it, it, there is a, a strength, I don't know, a, that power. You, a power that you, you don't, uh, I mean, you don't feel like this in, in a... In a but it's not the alcohol, is it? It's a pan alcohol. It's not the alcohol No, it's only. the... It's, no, no. It's, it's, it's the, the intensity. Yeah, it's the, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's... Uh, I cannot compare it to anything. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. That's yeah. great because you know, obviously, we do want to have things that do taste different, and and I think comparing is tricky because you you feel you want to decide which is better, and that's really not the idea. The idea is to have a frame of reference and see if you're learning something new, if you're experiencing something new, yeah, and discover, therefore, yeah, yeah, it's worth taste, it's new. worth trying yeah. to keep going in that direction. In any case, beautiful evening. Uh, we were happy to share this with you folks and then uh, we had a great time and then uh, I hope you did too and uh, we'll see you soon. See you soon. Cheers. Cheers.